This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Get your first two months for free by following the link in the description. Microsoft and app stores have a pretty long and rough history. Windows Phone died at least in part because of a lack of compelling apps, and many have criticized the store on the Windows 10 PC front for the exact same reason. I mean, I bet many casual users don't even know that there is a store on Windows 10 PCs. But is all this criticism still valid? Is the store still terrible? I'm Martin Tech out there, and let's explore the Microsoft Store. Last year, the store received a new logo and was renamed from Windows Store to Microsoft Store. This apparently is supposed to signify that Microsoft no longer thinks of this as just an app store, but rather a store for much more. You can now download or buy the following things in the Microsoft Store. Apps, of course, games, ebooks, movies, and TV shows, extensions for Microsoft Edge, the default Windows 10 web browser, themes that let you customize the look and feel of Windows, Windows version upgrades, fonts, and even Microsoft hardware like Surface devices. Availability, depending on your region, of course. So there are a lot of categories now, but is the store any good for them? And if it is, why should or shouldn't you use it? Let's start with apps. The Microsoft Store now actually has many top tier apps. Of course, Microsoft's own apps like Skype, Mail, and to do as well as office are now all in the store music is well covered with third-party apps from spotify amazon prime music deezer and even itunes yes apple of all companies moved their most used windows app to the store many top tier productivity apps like slack dropbox paint.net and the affinity apps are present and so are nearly all the big social apps as well although facebook's apps seem a little half-baked still this is a big increase in both the quantity and the quality of apps and it's in part thanks to microsoft opening up the store to new types of apps. So the store first launched with only so-called UWP or Universal Windows Platform Apps, which are native apps written for Windows 10, which other than Microsoft, only a handful of high-profile app makers adopted. But since then, Microsoft made special bridges that let both traditional desktop apps as well as progressive web apps come to the store, which unlike UWP are both platforms with healthy adoption rates. Of course, there are still things missing, and they fall into four main groups. Stores within the store, like Steam, are not allowed, and neither are browsers that don't use the Edge rendering engine. As of now, that covers pretty much all browsers. Firefox and Chrome could technically start using the Edge engine, like they use Safari on iOS, but I find that very unlikely to happen on Windows. So these are missing due to Microsoft's own restrictions. But there are also two major companies voluntarily missing from the store. Google, as a competitor of Microsoft, has long tried very hard to have all of Microsoft's efforts to build an ecosystem fail, instead building up Chrome as their platform, while Adobe, the leader in creative software has so far chosen to keep their creative cloud apps like Photoshop out of the store as it chooses to have its own little store to bundle its apps in instead. Either way, while the selection is far from perfect, it has improved quite a lot over time. But if you're wondering why you should use the store at all instead of just downloading stuff from the web like you've always done, then the answer is that the store makes things a little cleaner. Apps from the web usually have annoying updaters that launch on startup, making your boot times longer, they run in the background, slowing your PC down, and update your programs when you open them. That's annoying. Store apps don't have this and just update automatically in the background. Store apps also run in a sort of container, which means that it's much harder for them to have malware that accesses the rest of your system, and they are easier to uninstall. Just right-click, uninstall, and they are gone. No silly wizard and no junk left behind. Either way, if an app you want is actually in the store and you aren't likely to switch to Mac or Linux anytime soon, in which case obviously your purchases would get lost, then I totally recommend getting stuff from the store. When it comes to games though, I'm a little more mixed because here Microsoft is actually going up against established stores like Steam or good old games and Microsoft's offerings are a little weak in comparison I feel. On the good side, you have first-party Microsoft games like Minecraft, Halo, and Sea of Thieves, plus some benefits from Microsoft owning Xbox. Xbox Play Anywhere titles let you buy a game on a PC and also play it on your Xbox or the other way around. And there's also the Xbox Game Pass where you can pay a monthly subscription fee and get a bunch of games for free. 
I also find that using the Microsoft Store in Windows Mixed Reality is a little more convenient from a strictly UX perspective than using Stream. So if you are heavily invested into either Microsoft's games, consoles, or VR solutions, then yeah, the store brings some value. I also very much dislike when developers insist on me having to download a downloader just so I can download a game, like Blizzard does for example, and I would prefer if they just used a standard store instead. But Steam and good old games are really hard to compete with on a PC. They actually have the games that most of us want to play, more social features, usually also better sales, and while I find especially the Steam UI a little overly complicated, these are definitely more mature platforms. Movies and TV has a reasonable catalog of stuff to both rent and buy, and apparently if you are in the US, they even have over 200 movies in 4K. Sadly, 4K isn't available in most other regions, and Microsoft hasn't joined Disney's Movies Anywhere initiative yet either. The service works well, other than the fact that it only runs on Windows 10 devices. But I'm still a little worried that Microsoft might just one day decide to cancel the service like they recently did with music, and in that case you would lose your whole catalog. So I would say for renting movies, it is recommended. I rent movies from it all the time, but for buying stuff, maybe not yet. I have a hard time imagining that tons of people read ebooks on their Windows 10 PCs in their spare time, especially since the catalog isn't as great as it is on, say, Amazon. But ebooks should be interesting for education, since many schools use Windows devices in classes, and Edge is actually a really nice reader by now with inking and other advanced capabilities. Themes are cool if you're into personalization. There are actually a lot of really nice ones with pretty wallpapers, plus most of them are free, so check them out. The store also makes it really easy to upgrade from one Windows version to another, which is cool, and Edge extensions, well if you use Edge then you don't really have an alternative, so just use the store. Fonts are also available in the store now, although this seems like a really basic implementation for now, with a very limited selection. I'd love to have the option to just get custom fonts from the store and have them sync between my Windows devices, so I really hope that Microsoft builds this out further in the future. And finally, there is hardware. You can now buy hardware from Microsoft and their partners for thousands of dollars through the store. Why would you do it here instead of going to, say, the Microsoft website? I have no idea, but I guess also why not. So the selection has improved significantly, but there are still a few issues left. First of all, the amount of crap apps that just surfaces on the Microsoft Store is a little higher than it is on, say, the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. There are also a few random bugs and glitches every now and then, especially around the downloads, and I've even noticed a few cases of fake reviews. The China Daily app, for example, which is the official English language paper of the Chinese Communist Party, was released in the store and within a few days received over 600 reviews, all five stars here in Germany. Or this new app called The Chive, which is just a terrible newsreader with lots of spam in it, which has a ton of very good ratings in the German store. Pretty suspicious, especially when you compare that to Facebook, Spotify, and other popular apps that have been in the store for way longer. The fake China Daily reviews were removed, it seems, but yeah, my point is that the store still doesn't feel very polished. So Microsoft clearly launched the store in a very rough state, where many people decided that it is a terrible product that they just don't want to use. Microsoft then did improve the store significantly, to the point where I actually recommend using it for some things like music apps or productivity tools. But that came a little too late, because getting rid of a bad reputation is a very, very difficult thing. This is probably the most fundamental dilemma product managers and software companies have. They want to launch products as early as possible to get user feedback to know exactly what to improve. But they also want to launch as late as possible to avoid disappointing early users like the Microsoft Store did. This is a pretty complicated balance to find, and if you think you would be better at finding it than Microsoft, then maybe you should become a product manager. The basics of product management are very well explained in this course, and you can watch it or any other one of Skillshare's over 20,000 courses for free for the first two months if you use the link in the description. Skillshare has courses on everything from coding to photography, design to marketing, and a whole lot more. Plus you have a real instructor and real classmates you can interact with, and you can upload class projects for them to review, which really helps with the actual learning process. So if you're thinking about switching professions or just enjoy picking up new skills, follow the link in the description and give Skillshare a try.